Hi everyone, welcome to this podcast about our scoping review with the title Physical Rehabilitation Interventions in Children and Youth with Acquired Brain Injury, a scoping review. My name is Christian Gemelig Meiling and I would like to acknowledge all the co-authors and we are very grateful for publication of our scoping review in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. And in this short podcast, I will guide you through our findings. So after the acute phase of hospitalization, children and young people with moderate to severe acquired brain injuries are often admitted to specialized rehabilitation centers. They attend intensive therapy programs to regain their functional abilities with the ultimate goal to returning to their home and community. Our scoping review focuses on this so-called subacute rehabilitation phase, highlighted with this orange circle. But it is also known that these rehabilitation programs have a great potential through experience-dependent neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is considered to be the mechanism by which the damaged brain relearns by rehabilitation interventions. And emerging evidence, including adult acquired brain injuries, indicates that dosage, including intensity of practice, is an important component of the principles of experience-dependent neuroplasticity. So that brought us to our objective to scope current evidence about the characteristics according to the FIT criteria and effects according to the ICFCY of functional rehabilitation of physical rehabilitation on functional recovery and performance in daily functioning in children and youth with acquired brain injury. So after a systematic search in several online databases we screened 88 full text articles and finally included nine studies based on the inclusion and exclusion criteria which you can find here in this table and of these nine studies seven studies were cohort studies without concurrent controls and two were case reports here you can see uh, our results about the participants and you see a huge variety of patient characteristics we have found in etiology in age in time since injury and motor levels and most studies included relatively small study groups with less than 13 participants. So regarding the described interventions, according to the FIT criteria, we found um, also a lot of variation. We found a frequency between once and seven times a week. The intensity was not reported in any of the studies. Uh, the time varied between 20 minutes to six hours a day, and we found all different types of interventions. When we look at the effects, um, all included studies reported positive um, results on physical outcomes parameters. And on this slide, you can see the distribution of outcome measurements on the ICF model. And it's remarkable that none of the studies reported on the participation domain. So how should we interpret these results? We found small study groups and a substantial variety within these groups. And therefore, it remains unclear which children could benefit the most of physical rehabilitation. Regarding the interventions, we found a lot of variation in frequency, time and type of interventions. And uh, intens the intensity was not reported at all. So we realize that it is challenging to formulate one currency for intensity of interventions. And this needs definitely more attention in daily clinical practice and future research. So in conclusion, uh, because of the inconsistency in data in a relatively small number of studies, it remains unclear how much practice is optimal during subacute re rehabilitation. However, I think there is hope. Let me explain you by highlighting some topics about the potential for intensive rehabilitation discussed in our paper. Because physical rehabilitation is motor learning. And it's interesting that the principles of motor learning, for instance, the power of practice, are in line with the principles of experience-dependent neuroplasticity. So that means that motor learning principles could inspire and guide the dosing of practice. These principles are already supported with evidence in adults, but also in pediatric brain tumor survivors. And all these studies support the potential for increased intensity of physical practice in children with acquired brain injury. And we also believe in the 24-hour approach. Training and practice is important for recovery, uh, but it should be meaningful through the day. So not only in the gym with a therapist, but to extend the th the, these therapeutic activities uh, in all daily life meaningful activities. And we believe that this could be an opportunity for active involvement of parents and caregivers. 
And besides training, we should not forget the importance of adequate sleep, which is already supported in CP literature, but also applicable in children with acquired brain injury. So in summary, based on what we know, um, from related evidence, when we make this calculation, we believe that there is a potential for more intensive physical rehabilitation in children and youth with acquired brain injury during the subacute phase. So there is lots of work to do, and as you have seen, the optimal ingredients for physical rehabilitation are still unclear. And this topic is important for this population and to us as well. And we are highly motivated to optimize uh, the physical recovery of children with acquired brain injury step by step. So I would say work in progress, to be continued, um, or we should not say to be continued, but TBI to be investigated. Thanks for listening and please feel free to contact me if you have any questions.